Just got the truck set up here. First ever four door Bronco. These 30 inch tires. So stay tuned to the channel for that. So here we have the Ram, my parents' Ram 2500, and I'm going to be installing the new Fox shocks today. These are the factory race series, uh, no DSCs on these ones. Um, Fox is always out of stock of DSCs if you don't get in fast and get in quick. So uh, I've got a pin top on these shocks, standard bottom round bush so I'm gonna go ahead now I'm gonna start ripping off all the uh, wheels get all them off we'll go ahead we'll drop the old shocks out and then we'll start bolting up the new Fox ones and then we'll take it for a spin and see what the ride difference is like oh yeah so I've got the truck up on the hoist now you can see the stock shocks in there little tiny baby things standard shocks I'd recommend to replace your standard shocks when you buy a vehicle because they're not real good. They're fine for on-road and stuff, but anything else, yeah, nah, probably not. So I haven't done one of these before, but it looks like I'm gonna have to access it in from beside the exhaust. And because it's got a pin top here on the rear, and I think it's a pin top, pin top on the front also. So we're gonna have to get in there with a ratchet spanner and drop those out. And also just make sure that you're using some sort of uh, uh, transmission jack or something if you're on a hoist or something like this, or make sure you use axle stands. Right over the rear wheels are off. So we've got two pin tops to come out of the back and then up the front. Got the methods off and we've got the pin tops here to pull out as well on both sides so and then if i do get time i'm going to put some um, mud flaps on this thing as well uh, to stop this mud flying up the side of the truck for them so i'll go ahead now and i'll start undoing these shocks drop these out uh, we're not doing no sort of spring upgrade in this truck um, stock springs are fine they're just towing a caravan so I think it's a uh, 18 mil spanner. Oh, I hate how manufacturers build this lip around the top of the pin top. It just makes for changing your shocks a pain in the ass. Come down nice and easy. Impactors always make removing shit fun, but just the, they're just shit shocks. They're just crap. We have our new shock. Satisfying. Removing the packaging. I'll remove the cover off the DS. I'm sorry, not the DSC. The resi. Didn't get DSC. Didn't have none in stock. So. New shock. Alright, so I've got the got the top section of the shock in now, so it's just it's just sitting there. So what I'm going to do now is um, put this bottom bottom one in. So this is actually really straightforward. So basically, just drop your old shock out, and then uh, put your top of the pin top in the housing first into the top of the the strut tower and then put your bottom bolt in and these will line up exactly if you're not doing any lift and you just got the standard height shocks uh, these fox shocks um, very easy to get in you don't have to like kind of compress the shock up or anything like that um, because that is that full full droop for this truck so which is perfect so um yeah very easy to fit this kit if you're going to do it yourself okay so we do have the uh shock in now just tighten that up that top nut on the fox ones is actually a 19 mil and the standard was an 18. So what we're going to do now is you've got to get this kind of sitting exactly where you want it so there's no tension on your hydraulic hose here. And we want the shock to sit about like that. This is what the instructions is telling me. 
So this kit does come with this bracket. So this bracket will mount uh, in that direction. And they say to try and get this first nut here in line with the shock, in the center of the shock. So your bracket will sit around about there. Then I'm gonna try and line up the crease with the back side of this strut tower as well. So in theory, uh, and from what the instructions say, from what I understand, I think that should be right. Because then that shock will be pretty relaxed and no tension on that hose in that position. So we'll go ahead now and use the self-tapping screws to screw into this hole and to this hole. Uh, this hole stays uh, blank. I think this was for a different setup, this hole here. And then we'll mount the shocks, we'll mount the uh, reservoirs with the, the hose clamps and get them all put in place. And then hopefully we have enough clearance with the tyres and the offset and stuff that we have on the methods. And uh, if we run into any hiccups, I may have to change the location of this, this bracket here. Um, but we're gonna do as the instructions tell us and we'll go from there. So we'll go ahead now and tap these in. So the supplied hardware that you get with this kit, um, you do have four self-tapping screws. So I just gotta go grab my screw gun and then we're gonna drill these in with the bracket in our rough location where we need to be center of this shock. And then mount our bracket and then use our hose clamps to put our Reservoir up there. All right, so I just got our bracket here. I'm just going to mark uh, the best that I can. I'm just going to mark just here, and then another one just there. So that's our bracket position. So we're pretty much dead center of the the shock there for that front bolt, which is what the instruction says. So I have no idea where my <laughs> where my center punch is gone, or my good one. So we're going old school here for a second. So I've got a couple of centers there. And we are using the, uh, the good old Alpha Gold Series drill set. So you can pick up these from your local reputable hardware store. Um, really good set of drill bits that I've been using lately. So they're saying to go with a, saying to go with a 732. Um, so I think that's equivalent to a six mil or just under a six mil. So we'll go with a, might go with a 5.5 maybe. We'll go with a 5.5. Before I go through, I'm just going to check there's nothing on the back side of them. No. One. We'll come in here with our second. Two. So now we have our self-tapping screws, not that we were gonna self-tap because to get through steel that thick and self-tap, these are just basically gonna now bite into the, the surface of that metal. So now we have our bracket. Just gonna locate that up there. I'm just gonna nip this up slowly. Get that first one started, I'll just grab another, another uh, screw. So don't go cranking on power tools and things too hard. Um, you could even just do this with a normal uh, socket. So we just got the, uh, just starting the, uh, the second one now. Just like that. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to 
I'm gonna get a socket and I'm just gonna just nip these up so I can actually feel how much tension's on these, these screws. So I don't over tighten them. The worst thing you could do is over tighten them and snap them off and that would not be a fun time. That would be terrible. So I think they're a nine mil, but I've just got a 10 there. Just, uh, just nip them up. And um, I'll just leave that now, but I'm gonna check this. I'm gonna go and do some driving in the truck today and then I'll check everything, go back over every nut, bolt, mount the resi like that. Then you've got these hose clamps. So we run the hose clamps down through the backside here and clamp around just like that. And that should look pretty, pretty sweet. And we should have plenty of clearance, hopefully, in here. If not, we may have to uh, just turn the shock slightly to uh, get our clearance, but we should we should have clearance. So we're gonna go and just nip our clamp up, get it roughly in the position that we would like. I'm gonna tuck this back, kind of the back of the shock parallel to that bracket. Um, and then the clamp will sit in the uh, little indentation there on the back. So it doesn't actually go through, it just, it goes, wraps around the back of the bracket. So don't feed it in between the bracket and the back of the shock here. You'll just feel it'll sit flush. The bracket will go around, it'll sit in the indentation and continue around. Don't actually feed it through one of those, those holes. Um, because by the time you tighten these up, there's that much tension on the strap that it, you'll never have an issue with it uh, falling off or you shouldn't. Uh, Fox usually develops this stuff pretty good, so. You shouldn't really have any issues and I haven't done over a hundred thousand kilometers with my Fox six inch system um, and I run I got two point O's and also 2.5 uh, resi coilovers in the front of my truck and they've been absolutely fantastic so Fox is always my go-to for suspension Nice and tight there. Let's do this back one. So there's your 2.5 inch shock. Just make sure that your bolts are all torqued back up to our factory spec. But that's how your bracket goes in. And I'm not too sure if you can see the clamp around the back side there. It doesn't actually go in between the bracket and the, the reservoir. It goes right around the back of the bracket. So. Very nice. So let's fingers crossed that we have our clearance when we put our wheel back on. I'm going to go ahead now and do the other side. Um, we'll smash that out. It's just a mirror image, so um, I'm not going to film much of it. I'll just finish. I'll just film the finished product once we're done. So I'm just on the uh, passenger side now, just finishing up. I mean, it's only taken me probably you know, 10, 10 minutes to drop that shock and put this one in. So I just want to show you this bracket. So where the clamp goes, it sits like that on the back of the mount. It doesn't actually like get fed through this hole. So you just want to sit it around the back of the mount and it'll, it'll uh, locate into the back of that clamp, allowing your uh, resi to sit flush with the bracket. So just a, a tip there, but I'll get this one finished up and then we'll move on to the, uh, the rear of the truck and get the rears fitted. Okay, so both fronts are now installed and now moving on to the back and there isn't a lot of room up in there to uh, actually get the get the bolt out, so we're gonna see how we go here, but plenty of room to get the bottom out. Um, these are piggybacks, so the piggybacks are gonna sit at the bottom because obviously they can't go up through the, the frame of the truck, how these shocks are actually mounted on this vehicle. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to get a spanner in there to undo the top of that, that shock, and we'll see how we go. We'll rip, try and rip this thing out. Right, uh, so what I've had to do is just I've undone both of these bolts on the inner guard and then on the inside here I've taken the bolts out. I hate taking these inner guards out, but I've taken the bottom ones out roughly up to the centre to where that there is and um, that's now given me enough room to flex the guard up. I've actually pushed the guard up and I can now get a spanner into the top of that shock. Now we can get our ratchet spanner in there. 
So we just got uh, the back ones are also 22 mil. So we got the impactor and uh, we might have to swap the impactor over. And put that one on there. And put the short one on this side so I can get that in there. I don't have a 22 mil open ender, unfortunately. Just like that. I actually thought the back of that nut was um, welded when I first looked at it, but it was just the, uh, the, I don't know, it's like an undercoating they spray the rams with, I guess. So, just push this shock out. There's actually no, <laughs> there's no pressure on that shock at all. Basically useless. So we'll just push it back up. And then we'll... So what I did there is, uh, put the top of the pin top in first. Uh, slide it up in there and then you can simply manoeuvre the bottom of the shock in place. Um, just drop, drop your jack up and down that's under your diff if you need to um, to get it into the right spot but we'll bolt this one up now. Um, I've got the, the reservoirs facing towards the back. I can't really see if there's anything specified for them to be forward or back but I'd rather them be behind the shock and protected than copping all the stones and stuff getting deflected up at it. So. That's why I've ran them uh, towards the rear. I can't see any clearance issues. Right over the rear is all tight. Pretty straightforward to get that one in there. Just basically two bolts, top and bottom. Just make sure you put the, the pin top, the shaft up through there first before you try and locate the bottom. Just a lot easier. Okay, just finished off the uh, driver's side rear shock. So we now have all four corners done. So both the rears, both the fronts. Just about to double check the clearance for the fronts, but throw the wheels back on and check that our clearance is all good. Passenger side. And the final passenger rear. So we'll go ahead now and we'll get the, uh, the methods back on and see how we go for clearance. Righto, well, got everything installed. Just been doing some testing today with the new shocks in the Ram. So massive improvement. Uh, especially driving roads like this with the truck so I'm pretty happy with how it rides now so when you are doing a shock upgrade to your vehicle whether it's a ram I'm assuming you have a ram that's why you're watching this video but just make sure you, you're actually getting an upgrade don't don't pay for the the cheapest shock or anything like that because you're either going to get a very uh, harsh untuned ride or You'll, you'll be on a, the too firmer scale. In regards to buying cheap shocks, they're usually uh, very stiff, very harsh ride. They're not very smooth. They, they aren't really tuned to that specific vehicle. They're more so made for a wide range of vehicles. So the Fox 2.5s for this truck, um, they're made for this truck. So they're definitely a nice, a nice upgrade. I'm getting attacked by flies today. Go with the 2.5, go with this system. Um, whether you're going to do a lift or whatever, um, they can, the, the shock length and everything's accommodated for your lift. So um, my suggestion on lifts, if you're going to lift one of these things, is go with a BDS kit. That's probably one of the best kits on the market is BDS suspension. So it's been about a week now. We've had the shocks fitted. Uh, we've been doing a, a bit of towing this week with the truck and um, noticed a massive improvement um, on the way how the truck handles and feels on the road just by simply upgrading those shocks to a uh, a nice big 2.5 inch bore size. Definitely a good upgrade, but um, yeah, so that's the install. Hope the uh, video today has helped you. If you've got any questions about the shocks or the install or anything you'd like to know, just drop it in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. But yeah, until the next one guys, catch you later.